I hope everyone had a nice Easter break. Welcome back and welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Sarah Luckert. And I'm Bethany Biggenhill. Here's your news now. This semester, Cabrini College is putting on the production Working, a play about normal people getting through their work day, but emphasizing how people take serious pride in their work, even if it goes unnoticed. Opening day is coming this Thursday, but Location managed to get a sneak peek. This semester, Cabrini College is presenting Working. The show Working is a play that stars ordinary people and takes us through their normal working routines. Mason singing, the waitress singing, the However, even though it appears that people with different jobs have nothing in common, it is discovered by the audience that they all take pride in their work. We had a college boy at work this summer. This one time he saw a book in my back pocket and he says to me, You read? And that's what can get to you. The non-recognition by other people. To say, to say a man is just a laborer, a woman is just a housewife, it bothers you sometimes. See that building. It seems at the end of the day, everyone just wants something to point to. For Location, I'm Greg Stevens. Relay for Life is just around the corner. Location interviewed group member Tim Sales. Let's hear about how last year's event went and what news he has for this year's upcoming event. Everyone has their own personal reason why they go to Relay for Life and do Relay. For family members who was di diagnosed or passed away from cancer, survivors, friends and family, or just to do a good thing. Last year's event, we raised $28,000. Yeah, our goal was $30,000. We raised $28,000. It was 16 hours long. We had 300 participants, I think. This year's relay, there's going to be a check-in at 3 p.m. on the 21st. We're going to have some games for people to join in so they're not bored when they get there. Then there are ceremonies. There's a survivorship ceremony a caretaker ceremony, and then the luminaria ceremony, which all of those are pr really powerful. And then there's activities like we have tug of war, volleyball, and at the end, around 2.30 a.m., we have a rave. You can go and sign up a day of, but we uh, would like everyone to sign up online. The website is www.relayforlife.org backslash P.A. Cabrini, and then you go uh, sign up, and you can either join a team or make a new team. Everyone should come. It's a lot of fun. Every student knows you have to take study food breaks. If you're looking for great comfort food, there's no better place to visit than the restaurant The Meltdown that opened just last week in Wayne. The Meltdown features an array of grilled cheese sandwiches, and they even have grilled cheese desserts, including a grilled ice cream sandwich. The Meltdown actually replaced the famous pizzeria Pizza Pizza. But with so many other pizzerias in Wayne, The Meltdown brings a fresh idea along with delicious grilled cheeses. Two local heroes lost their lives in Kensington this week after the old Thomas W. Buck hosiery building erupted into a five-alarm fire. One of the walls fell in an adjacent store burying four firefighters under tons of debris. Two were rescued, but a 60-year-old lieutenant and 25-year-old firefighter were tragically lost that day. Neighbors have been deeply irritated with the owners of the enormous brick structure prior to the fire because the owners never took care of the building and owe nearly $60,000 in taxes. The district attorney's office will decide whether the owners should face criminal charges. That was your trip around the block. Let's go across the nation with Bethany. This past March went down as the warmest March in the United States 
since record keeping began in the 1800s. January and February also set records for the warmest first quarter ever. According to a weather agency, over 7,000 record highs were recorded just this month, which adds on to March's 7,000 all-time high record temperatures. Tornado reports were also four times the average. But don't worry, these short-term patterns are considered poor indicators for global climate trends. The nationwide case of the death of Trayvon Martin has decided against a grand jury. Florida neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman has been distressed from all the media attention the case has received over the past month. Florida's self-defense law, known as Stand Your Ground, allows the use of deadly, deadly force if the subject feels they are in serious danger. Angela Corey replaced state prosecutor Norm Wolfinger, who removed himself from the case last month, and claims her office is still investigating the incident and she could file charges or drop the case. Lastly, in national news, there were no better people to hit the mega millions than three humble school workers. An elementary teacher, special education teacher, and an administrative worker hit the record high $606 million jackpot. Each of them were granted $35 million after taxes. All three winners hold multiple jobs to make ends meet and plan to keep working. Because the state permits winners to stay anonymous, their students and coworkers may never know. Here's Sarah for your trip around the world. Syrian troops are expected to withdraw from military operations this week under the UN peace deal. However, this week was one of the bloodiest of the uprisings thus far. Activists reported more than 100 dead this week alone. The international plan to bring fighting to an end seems to have brought a surge of violence by the Assad regime. UN Secretary General made a final plea for the Syrian administration to halt all attacks on civilians. The UN reported more than 9,000 deaths in the Syrian since the uprising began more than a year ago. The plan to end more violence seems near impossible. Three Asian airlines have decided to change the flight paths to avoid a North Korean rocket expected to launch later in April. About a dozen flights will change in their routes because the fear of the launch is disguised as a test of the long-range missile. North Korea claims for its pe peaceful purposes and says the rocket is a satellite that will mark the 100th birthday of North Korea founding leader. Philippine officials also declared a no-fly zone and even warned ships to avoid the area during the planned launch. The centenary year of the Titanic marks the end for the chance to see the famous cruise liner in its final resting place. Marine dive specialists will take paying tourists down to the wreck for the last time since it started its expedition a mere 14 years ago. For those enthusiasts who refuse to miss out on their last chance, they will be paying under $60,000 a piece to see the wreck. Currently, no other organizations offer a commercial voyage expedition leader. Rob McCallum is ready to move on to other things since the last Titanic survivor has passed away. Now let's check in with our new tech reporter, Greg Stevens, for this week's Tech Connection. This week in your latest tech news, YouTube is now offering pay-per-view options to publishers on its live streaming service. Companies said that it was in the process of rolling out live streaming to its partners. YouTube partner product manager Valram Talwar posted in his blog stating, you can now monetize your live events with an advertised or paid option. A live event can be claimed in new video manager like any other video and monetize with in-stream ads or paid options where you can set price by country. In other news, more iPhone 5 rumors have surfaced. Rumors say that the next-gen iPhone will have a modified Apple chip, more memory, new chassis, and a bigger screen. It is also rumored that the launch date will be around August or September. If you don't have an iPhone yet like me, you may want to start saving now because the iPhone 5 is shaming up to be a must-have. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more latest tech news. Let's see what sports news Mary-Kate has for us today. Citizens Bank Park was packed as the Philadelphia Phillies returned for the home opener of the 2012 season. Unfortunately, the Marlins defeated the Phillies 6-2, dropping the record to 1-3. Masters champion Bubba Watson's big shot on a second playoff hole is the highlight everyone will remember. Watson's win at Augusta National earns him the green jacket and the number one cross-sport power ranking for the week. Let the Cabrini College win streak begin. The Cabrini College men's lacrosse team has won their last eight games. Their defense currently ranks as the second scoring defense in the nation, allowing 4.64 goals per game. Their next competition will be at Macalai University this Saturday. The Cabrini College softball team extended its current win streak to six games after their victory over Notre Dame. 
junior Taylor McGarvey was 5 for 5 at the plate and scored three runs. They welcome Newman University to Gabrini Field for the CSAC play this Friday. Let's hope the Cavaliers will continue their win streaks to work their way to the CSAC championship. That's all I have for you this week. Now back to Sarah and Bethany. We wish the Cavaliers continued success for their season. Now let's check in with Holly for this week's entertainment news. Teen mom and former teen bride Leah Messer is a teen bride once again. As reported by E! News, the 16 and pregnant and teen mom 2 star married her fiancé Jeremy Calvert just one year after filing for divorce from her first husband and father of her twins, Corey Sims. Messer and Sims' relationship was played out on MTV's hit show Teen Mom 2, where viewers saw everything from their marriage to Messer filing for divorce. In true reality fashion, her second nuptials were also filmed by MTV, so most likely we will be seeing this wedding on an upcoming episode of Teen Mom 2. Jennifer Hudson will soon be appearing in court. The trial for the vicious murders of her mother, brother, and nephew will soon be starting, and Hudson is among 300 other people who are on the witness list. William Balfour is being charged with all three murders that took place in 2008. If convicted, he is facing the maximum sentence of life in prison. That's all I have for you this week. Be sure to tune in next week for more entertainment news. Cap Board is welcoming new members for next semester. Let's check in with Melissa as she talks to the new person of the week. Hi guys, I am Melissa Webb with your person of the week, and this time we have Emily Fiore. So you're president of Cat Board. Tell me about some of the tasks you have to complete. Uh, well, as president, I run the entire board. Um, I work with Peter Morrison, who's the vice president and the executive board and the board of directors, who each plan their individual events. So I'm not exactly planning events anymore. Um, I'm more of overseeing things and doing the behind the scenes work. Uh, a lot of the paperwork that goes into it, fundraising and stuff like that. How are you able to manage all of that plus schoolwork? Yeah, I'm actually student teaching right now, so I'm not on campus at all during the day. Um, Monday through Friday, I am in school until almost uh, 3 o'clock, 2.30, 3 o'clock, and then I usually come right back to Cabrini, and that's when I get started working. Um, days we have events, I usually come at night, um, and those days are a little bit easier. But as for a uh, regular day, I'll just come and get my work done and then go ahead and leave to do more schoolwork. Do you recommend joining Catboard? Definitely. It was a great experience for me at Cabrini. Mm -hmm. I joined my sophomore year, and it really just turned uh, my whole perception and view of college around. And it was a great experience, so I would suggest anybody joining it. And it's not too late. We have people join all the time their juniors and senior years. So we are looking forward to the rest of the events that you guys have planned for the rest of the semester. It was a pleasure having you. All right, thank you. Now back to the news desk. Thanks for staying tuned in with us this week. For Location News, I'm Sarah Lucker. And I'm Bethany Biggenhill. Have a great week, Cabrini.